Best of the day to all of you. And welcome to this introduction to cybernetic technology. The idea of cybernetics is an old science fiction concept, which like many other old sci-fi concepts, over the last few years is close to becoming a reality. Our intent is to give it that last little push across the threshold into reality. In this video series, we will review the concept in depth, explaining the basic natural processes at work in the human nervous system, how the technology needs to work and the requirements for effectively integrating the two. In a nutshell, we're talking about limb replacement, on a level that goes well beyond the prosthetics of today. By this, we mean full functionality which includes Fine motor control Tactile sense, also known as a sense of touch Pressure sense And normal weight lifting control Included with this as well are easy maintenance, and easy replacement of the cybernetic limb. However, before we get too wild and wooly with the technology, we have a few topics to review first, or there is a very real risk this might not make sense. P.S. When you have the chance, all of this can be verified. Well, almost all. The two-way neural interface that's coming up, hasn't been built yet. Moving on. After reviewing some basic neuroscience concepts, we will go over the technology key to this entire process, outlining how and why it will work. This will be followed by a short segment concerning limb preparation, with a focus on neural bundles and bone attachments. Naturally, very few things involving human medicine are ever cut and dry. Because of this, we will take a moment to highlight a few of the risks with the process that are known or at least suspected by the author of this video. And last we will go over the production, or more accurately the manufacturing process for the technology, combined with the activation process. Because we are talking about nervous systems, keep in mind that each person's system is slightly different. For this reason there is a degree of custom manufacturing and a need for fine-tuning when fitting a patient with a replacement cybernetic limb. Now about those simple lessons on neuroscience. The first key point concerning neuron behavior, may seem like common sense, but it's important. We know for a fact that signals travel along neural pathways back and forth to our brains. Which brings us to one of the basic components of those pathways. Here's an image of a neuron. With a simulated electrical signal moving through the neuron. These signals move at roughly 200 miles per hour. It may seem odd that an electrical signal is this slow, but there really is a good reason for it. However, for now, we'll go ahead and skip the mechanics behind this process. The key point is that there are signals traveling back and forth between our limbs and our brains, along a neural pathway. The second point. Please pay careful attention to this one, it's important. When neurons lose connectivity with another neuron or another cell, they leave behind a marker known as a synaptic site. Leaving aside the limitations, of artistically challenged authors, this is what a synaptic site looks like. Sort of. My goodness, that is easily one of the worst representations my circuits have ever beheld. Fortunately, the image has enough similarity to the real thing, that we can still get the idea across. The third point about neuron behavior concerns a process known as chemoaffinity. It is through this process that nerve terminals are able to seek out and attach to empty synaptic sites. The process of neural chemoaffinity in action looks something like this. The nerve terminal is attracted to the binding sites located inside the synaptic site, and as shown, is drawn to, then connects to the synaptic site. The key points to remember here are 1. The synaptic sites. This is how neuron terminals know where to connect. 2. The nerve terminals themselves. These lead back to the brain, which is where the perception process of our senses actually happens. In other words, this is where the sensations that we directly know as our senses actually live. 3. The process of chemoaffinity. Without this, the concept of true cybernetic technology, like that described in our science fiction stories would not be feasible. Got all that? Despite the quality of that representative art? Oh thank goodness. Or rather, that is excellent. As you will see in a moment, each of these basic points are crucial. Moving on, to these marvelous creations known as nerve bundles. Nerve bundles are how signals travel from the body back to the brain. What is shown in this nerve bundle representation, are strand bundles of neural cells, wrapped inside another sheath, with a series of arteries and veins as well as some fatty tissues. Neurons by themselves, are terrible at moving signals along. And they are even worse when bundled together without some means of insulation between the cells. This is accomplished on the cell level by a combination of Schwann cells like the ones shown in the earlier nerve diagram, and other insulators that cover the axon and Schwann cell strands, 
as well as bundles of nerve strands. Another way of describing this, would be similar to a copper wire wrapped in a plastic insulator, grouped with other copper wire strands, who are then bundled together and wrapped in another insulator, and the wire bundle is wrapped again with other wire bundles. Think of it as an advanced organic network system that runs from a series of end-user computers back to a central management server console. Naturally, these well-insulated nerve bundles run from the body back to the spinal cord. Where the nerve bundles are consolidated into a single trunk, where all kinds of signals from all over the body are traveling next to one another. Then from the spinal cord, the signals travel up into the brain, to be translated into what we know as a perception of touch. Then based on a decision to move, signals then travel from the brain down the nerve bundles to the muscles. Which are then triggered to move as directed by the brain. There's more, of course, but this is more than enough for what we are discussing at the moment. The reason we have reviewed all this information, is this. The successful attachment of a cybernetic limb, that can send signals back to the human brain along the same neural pathways used by the natural processes. And as shown here, enable the process of perceiving sensation. Now, about the technology to achieve this long-standing goal. The key piece to all of this is known as a two-way neural interface. Like many things related to technology that interacts with the human nervous system, this is not a new idea. The neural connectors shown here are examples of efforts designed to connect directly to the neural bundles, by either directly clamping on, or inserting conductors into the bundles. This looks like a simple idea that should work. Unfortunately, despite appearances, there is a catch. Most of this technology only works one way. Meaning that the signals travel from the nervous system out to the prosthetic, but not back from the prosthetic to the brain. That said however, do keep in mind that the electrical signals from the brain are in fact being used for motor control of the prosthetics. Additionally, the use of invasive devices like the ones just shown are not required. In fact, today, non-invasive, passive listening electrical signal detectors have been applied with excellent results. This is not to say that two-way neural interfaces don't already exist. As a matter of fact recent work on visual two-way neural interfaces has produced some very promising results where a limited form of sight has been enabled through artificial means. But this is still in the early stages of development. What is being proposed here, is something, that is a little more. Advanced. What is shown here, are two-way neural interface units that connect directly to the neural bundles of a limb, and provide a means of connecting to a prosthetic that possesses the ability to sense touch, temperature, and pressure changes. Here's a closer look at the concept of these two-way neural interface units. Of will need to go into a little more detail about the inner workings of this technology, above and beyond the high-level concepts. As we go over the workings of this device, please keep in mind these images are not to scale. Now, this copper-colored part, is what connects to the electronics of the prosthetic. This other purple end, connects to the nerve bundle and is right where all the magic happens. The part in the middle, by design is a cable-like structure that is intended to vary in length depending upon the location of the nerve bundle termination inside the body of the patient versus the connection point of the prosthetic outside the body. Which means the cable-like structure will require a very high degree of flexibility, to accommodate nerve bundle terminations that have receded into the body beyond joint junctions used for motion. However, before we get into the details on the cable components, we need to review this critical part of this device that enables effective integration. As mentioned earlier this is where the real magic happens and it's time to talk about how that magic works. Returning to this example of a nerve bundle drawing and the interior of the connector, we'll use these examples to explain how the neural interface, is intended to attach. Keep in mind that living neural bundles have a lot more nerves in them than what is shown in this drawing. Notice how the dark rings inside of the purple connector are tailored to align with, and fit the interior bundles. As you review the diagram, please allow us to draw your attention to the individual neuron strands, and the artificial synaptic sites. Here's a better view of an artificial synaptic site. These are designed to attract neuron terminals, the same way the living synaptic sites accomplish this task, through the process of chemoaffinity, using the purple binding sites inside the blue outer ring. And as shown in this example, enable an effective neural connection, which can then be used to transmit signals along the natural neural pathways, to the brain, to generate the sensations of touch, pressure, and temperature consistent with normal and natural neural functionality. With our connections in place, we should be ready to go. Well almost. This isn't quite a, Houston we have a problem moment, but it turns out having a synaptic connection is only one part of the neural communication process. Returning to the image of the artificial synaptic site a moment, 
to get a better look at the mechanics of the signal transmission process, let's remove the neuron terminal, the text, and rotate this around for a better look at the two wires coming out of the artificial synaptic site. The wires run around the inside of the outer ring of the synaptic junction. And just to be clear, these are not connected to the binding sites inside the junction. Electrical neural signals don't travel through the synaptic junctions. This may sound weird, but it's true. The reason electrical neural signals move so slow, is because the signal is based on a change in polarity from positive to negative along the cell wall membrane of a neuron. Think of it like a stack of dominoes falling over, only in this case, after a domino has been knocked over by its neighbor, it also stands back up. What the wire allows us to do, is to temporarily change the polarity of the blue ring of the artificial synaptic site to negative. Which in turn triggers the membrane of the cell wall to start flipping polarity. Although there is a limit to the range of intensity that can be transmitted this way, through the blue ring of the artificial synaptic site, the frequencies of the polarity shifts utilized by natural systems can be fully replicated. Which is the mechanism that enables signals for touch, pressure, and temperature to be transmitted to the brain from an artificial limb. That covers the basics behind the concept of a cybernetic two-way neural interface. In the next video, we will talk about the surgical procedures, outlining some of the challenges with replicating the insulation that is required to ensure effective and usable signal quality. In the meantime, we hope this video is helpful, and if you are involved with the field of prosthetic technology, that you will make use of this information for the benefit of all individuals, human or otherwise, who need it. Have a great day and may your efforts to help others be highly successful.